This is a sample video from a series of physics topics on which more information can be found on the website. A duck paddling in the water will make waves all around it. As it paddles forward, then each new wave is made in a slightly different place to the one before. As a result, the waves in front of the duck seem to be bunched together and those behind it seem to be stretched out. The wavelength of those in front of it are small and the wavelength of those behind are larger. So in this animation we produce just one wave. As it spreads out, the duck's moving forward and it's closer to the front of the wave than to the back. Again, as the duck moves forward, the centre of each new wave is slightly further to the right and therefore the waves bunch up on that side, whereas they stretch out behind the duck. A car doesn't usually create water waves, but it does make a noise. If we exaggerate the sound of the car horn, you can hear what happens. A scientific observer in front of the car hears the sound waves bunched up. And when that observer moves behind the car, the sound waves are stretched out. So in front of the car, the wavelength is small. The frequency with which the waves reach the ears of the observer is high, which results in a higher pitched note. Behind the car, the wavelength is much larger. The frequency with which the waves reach the ears of the observer is less, and the sound seems much deeper. Stars emit electromagnetic waves, and we're particularly interested in the light waves which we can observe. Because the relative movement of stars is very fast, the bunching up of the waves in front and stretching out behind is significant. An observer on Earth looking at a star which is moving away will see the waves stretched out. You'll notice by the way that the Earth and the observer aren't exactly to scale. If the relative movement of the star is towards the observer then the waves seem bunched together. When we look at other stars and galaxies in space we can't tell if they are moving or if we are moving or if we're both moving. All movement is relative, that's either towards or away from us. But that doesn't make any difference to the observations. An observer moving towards another star will see the waves more frequently, they will seem bunched up. An observer moving away will see the waves stretched out. The waves which are stretched out, which have a longer wavelength, are closer to the red end of the spectrum than we'd expect. Those which are bunched up are closer to the blue end of the spectrum than we'd expect. The spectrum from different stars does vary, but there are lines across those spectra which are the same no matter which stars you're looking at. These black lines are called the Fraunhofer lines and they're caused by absorption of elements in the star's atmosphere. The stars from distant galaxies show exactly the same pattern of lines, but they are usually shifted slightly towards the red end of the spectrum. We deduce from that that these galaxies are moving away from us and some of the most distant galaxies are moving away very quickly. The Doppler effect is one way of explaining this observation. Calculating the relative speed of the source of the waves and of the observer is reasonably straightforward. Providing that this relative velocity is only a small proportion of the speed of the waves. The ratio of the change of frequency to the original or the change of wavelength to the original is exactly the same as the relative velocity between the source and the observer and the actual speed of the wave. Thank you for watching. More information on this series of videos is available on the website.